So we've seen that the periodic gamma estimate is not a very good estimate of the power spectral density due to the high variance at any particular frequency. And we've also seen that we could reduce this variance by blocking the data and averaging over the blocks. Now it turns out that this is not the only way of averaging the data in order to get a more reliable estimate. So if we look at the periodogram estimate, it's going to be fairly bad at any particular frequency, but if we look over a range of frequencies, we see that sometimes it's above and sometimes it's below. So by averaging over frequencies instead, we could also obtain a more reliable estimate of the true power spectral density. So if we look at this concept and we introduce the concept of a window in the frequency domain, so a set of frequencies which we could average over, we see that at the midpoint of these, which would correspond to the average of all these frequencies, we get an average which is closer to the true power spectral density, simply because some of the values are above and some of the values are below. And we see that by playing with this window, we could in principle play with the variance and the resolution. So if we choose a more narrow window, we would average over fewer frequencies, which would increase the variance, but it would also increase our spectral resolution. So averaging over a whole window would decrease our spectral resolution because we lose specificity of the particular frequency that we look at. And we could use this concept to compute the average for any particular frequency by simply sliding the window along. And we would consistently get better estimate of the true power spectral density. So in this particular case, for this particular window that is shown here, if we do this for every single frequency by sliding the window along, we will get the spectral estimate which looks like this. And we would see that at particular frequencies like here and here, we get a consistently better estimate of the true power spectral density. Now, this particular window has a problem around the peaks because of its square shape. So around the peak, we get this plateau effect. And the thing to note here is that we're looking at the power spectral density on a, mag uh, on a decibel scale while we do the average on the linear scale, so averaging of the spectral estimate. But in order to combat these plateaus around the spectral peaks here, we could simply choose another window which assigns more weight to the particular frequency around which we are computing the average. So doing that, picking this window for instance, which would place a larger weight on the frequencies close to the frequency, uh, frequency at which we want to compute the average and placing less weight as we go away from that, we would still get an averaging effect and we could get this at several different frequencies just like before by sliding the window along. But we would also get the better sensitivity around the peak simply since we are placing more weight on the particular frequencies which are close to the frequency we, where we are computing the estimate. So if we do the same thing here and compute the power spectral estimate using this window for every particular frequency, this is the curve that we would get. And this is surprisingly similar to what we saw in the case of the Welsh estimate. But doing the averaging in the frequency domain instead is the basis of a method called blackman tukes method. Looking at this mathematically, the blackman tukes estimate is created as follows. So the blackman tukes estimate at a particular frequency is given by the periodogram estimate over frequencies indexed by tau here, weighted together using a window shifted to this particular frequency at which we want to compute the estimate. And the averaging here, since it's of a frequency continuous function, uh, the periodogram in this case, uh, the averaging is done by an integral with multiplication with the window. And assuming that the window is symmetric in terms of the frequency, this is the same as convolving the periodogram estimate with the window function. And the reason why it has to be symmetric is that the sign here would otherwise be incorrect for it to be a convolution. Now, uh, if this method relied on us creating the periodogram estimate for every single frequency in order to evaluate this integral, it would not be a very efficiently computable method. So the question is, can we obtain the same estimate in a computationally more efficient manner? And we can. So we'll next look at how we'll compute this estimate in practice. So let's consider a question related to that. So given that the blackman tukey estimate is given by the periodogram estimate averaged using a window or convolved with a window function, can, if we compute this in the time domain, which would be the corresponding correct uh, um, expression in the time domain? So would the blackman tukey estimate be given by the Fourier transform of the data multiplied by a window in the time domain? Would it be equivalent to an estimate of the autocorrelation function multiplied by a window and taking its Fourier transform? Or should we take the data that we have available, multiply by the window, take the absolute value square and divide by the number of samples? Or should we alternatively consider to take uh, the 
autocorrelation function multiply it by the window, taking the absolute value squared and then normalizing by the number of samples that we have available. Well, the correct answer to this question is option number two, simply because the periodogram estimate, as we saw in the previous lecture, could be viewed as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function estimate. And multiplying something uh, with something in the time domain is equivalent to, to do the convolution in the frequency domain between the Fourier transform of the corresponding quantities. So that means that option number two is the correct answer. Summarizing what we have learned, the conceptual view of the blackman tukey method is we take a periodogram estimate and we're averaging in the frequency domain in order to get the blackman tukey estimate. But the actual implementation is based as follows. So we take the autocorrelation estimate that forms the basis of the periodogram estimate and we apply a window to the data before taking its Fourier transform. And this is how we get the blackman tukey estimate. Now you want to choose this window to be symmetric around k equal to zero or its center point. And the reason for that is that you want to create an overall symmetric function here so that you guarantee that the Fourier transform of the function is real valued since our estimate of a uh, power spectrum has to be a real valued function. Additionally, one typically chooses the window function so that it's identic identically equal to zero for k larger than some m here, where m is typically referred to as the maximum lag of the estimator, which means that we only have to evaluate the autocorrelation estimate for all k which is greater than or less than or equal to this particular m. Also, we typically want to choose the window function w here so that its Fourier transform is strictly positive. And the reason for that is that we want to create a strictly positive function in our estimate. So if since the periodogram estimate is a strictly positive function over the frequencies, and if we assume that the same thing is true of the window, then the convolution of these two strictly positive or these positive non-negative functions will yield a non-negative function here, meaning that we will never get an estimate which tells us that we have a negative power at any particular frequency, and this is of course desirable. Now, we cannot compute the blackman tukey estimate for all the frequencies for the same reason that we cannot compute the periodogram estimate for all the frequencies, but having this view here allows us to compute it at particular frequencies just like the periodogram by applying the FFT algorithm or the discrete Fourier transform at some particular length which will give us the estimate at particular frequencies given by the index k over n in this case for all these different k, just like in the FFT or in the periodogram estimate using the FFT. Now, if we have a maximum lag of m, then what would be the shortest FFT length that we could use in order to evaluate this at different frequencies in an accurate way, in a correct way? So would we need to have the length of the FFT to be greater than the maximum lag? Would it need to be greater than two times the maximum lag? Would it have to be greater than two times the maximum lag plus one? or the maximum lag squared? Correct answer to this question is option number three. It has to be greater than two times the maximum lag plus one. And the reason for this is simply that this uh, number, so if we have plus minus m as the maximum value for autocollation, which is not multiplied by zero, the size of the sequence that we would have, which is non-zero, is two times m plus one. And this is the shortest length of the FFT. Looking at the performance of this estimate here with a maximum lag of 64 in a Blackman window, which is in fact the non-rectangular window that we saw in the previous example applied to a data set of 124 samples, we can see that we get an estimate of the true power spectral density, which is actually fairly good. It still doesn't have perfect resolution, just like Blackman and Welsh method, and this is due to the averaging and the choice of the window, but we see that we get a consistently better estimate than we do with the periodogram estimate being uh, very close. This estimate would of course differ depending on the particular realization, so if we take another realization of the same stochastic process, we get a different estimate, but generally speaking our estimate would be closer to the true power spectral density, and this is a characteristic of a spectral estimator with a lower variance than the periodogram. And I've noted previously that by playing with the size of the window, you could change the properties of this. So in general, choosing a window which is more narrow in the frequency domain allows greater frequency resolution at the expense of higher variance. And likewise, choosing a window which is broader in the frequency domain 
to, uh, gives us less spectral resolution but at the same time a lower variance. So here is the same estimate applied with a maximum lag of 32 and a Blackman window. So noting that if we stretch something in the time domain we make it shorter in the frequency domain and likewise if we make the window shorter in the time domain it's widened in the frequency domain and we get averaging over more frequencies which shows an improved variance in the, in the frequencies where the power spectrum estimate is varying slowly at the expense spans a poorer spectral resolution which is manifested here in terms of widenings of the spectral peak. And we could go in the other direction as well and make the window longer in order to get better spatial resolution. Again drawing a different realization gives us a different uh, particular plot but it shows the same story or tells the same story. So in order to summarize the blackman took estimate lowers the variance of the periodogram estimate by simply smoothing the periodogram in the frequency domain. Now this is not the way that it's implemented because this would be very inefficient. So instead we compute the autocorrelation estimate and we multiply that with a window in the time domain in order to create the convolution in the frequency domain that we are after. So we smooth the estimate by multiplication in the time domain.